When it comes to lightweight towables, I think this one right here is going to be a top contender. This is a 2025 East to West Silver Lake 1600 RBLE. And the thing I really like about this one is even though it comes in at 3,800 pounds with about 1,000 pounds of carrying capacity, so it's still under that 5,000 GPWR, you get 81 inch ceiling height and you get an eight foot wide box. So it's lightweight and still gives you a ton of space so you don't feel closed in. We we're talking about lightweight camper. I think that is huge. And it has the setup that you want, right? You have a campsite dinette right here where you have the big window out to the campsite. The dinette is plenty large too, which I like. I mean, I can easily sit four people here, no problem. This does drop down into a bed. And something that I personally really like that they've done with the table is that they attach it to the wall right here. Rather than having a second leg, it mounts to the wall. Some manufacturers prefer to have the second leg so you can take the table outside. This one, although it doesn't give you that flexibility, look how stable it is. You can put a little bit of weight on here. You can actually use the table. You're not gonna have that flex that a lot of times you see. You'll also notice that underneath there is going to be both USB ports as well as electrical outlets. So if you wanna plug something in while you're sitting here, you have full capability to do that and tons of storage all the way across the top, super clean. And because you have the taller ceiling heights, it also gives you taller storage capacities than what we're used to seeing in the single axle floor plans like this. It has a roof mount AC. And again, I can walk all the way underneath this without any issues. A lot of times when you're getting a floor plan like this, it's not going to be a roof mount, it's going to be a sidewall mount. Again, I think this is going to be a huge advantage over some of the others in this space. Uh, as we can see here, fully heated and enclosed underbelly as well. Again, that's something else we normally don't see. And you will also notice that there aren't any heat vents in the floor. They basically bring all of it through furniture or as you notice here, just direct vent furnace. So you can have this one kind of out in, uh, you know, like late fall, early springtime and you shouldn't have any issues. As for the rest of the kitchen, seamless countertops. You'll see that this is a thermal form countertop. It's not going to be a T-mold. That's a nice upgrade. Two burner cooktop here. So you get a, a little bit less space, but they do that to give you a little bit more prep space. So it's kind of a give and take situation. Really depends just what you personally prefer. And then kind of uh, same thing with the bowl. This is pretty common in this size camper where you get a single bowl that is under mount. And I like the color of it. Uh, kind of has that like almost gunmetal look. You also see it is a high rise faucet. So you get a little bit of space there. And then underneath an electrical outlet and really good drawer space. So. You have full uh, plywood kitchen uh, drawer boxes here. You can see that kind of all the way, uh, all the way throughout. You have nice built uh, quality drawers, and then take a look at all the storage space you get underneath here. I and mean, they just do a phenomenal job of really maximizing the space in this small camper. Uh, we've got a light here. Whoop! I must not have turned that one on, but you can see the uh, the window in the back kind of acts as a nice backsplash of the microwave up top. A little bit more storage right over here to the side. And then big refrigerator here as well. I mean, it is uh, gonna be 12 volt compressor driven. You can see the size of the fridge. You know, I, I really like that they've gone to like these uh, 10.7 cubic foot instead of like the six that we would normally see in a, a camper this size a few years back. A lot of manufacturers go into a bigger one. Love that they maximize the space underneath that fridge as well. well. One of the things that most people probably won't notice, but in my opinion, again, one of the biggest things when I'm looking at construction is this right here. Folks, this door is actually framed out in wood. This is not plastic trim. By having the wood, it opens and closes the way it should because you don't get all that flex in the trim work. On top of that, it's a full privacy door from top to bottom. You don't have a big gap here. You don't have a big gap down below. That is huge if you're looking to I don't know, keep the romance alive or just keep smells where you want them to be. Uh, that is going to be a just a, a big feature in my opinion. Uh, you will also see that you have a mirrored medicine cabinet as well as the sink right down below. Uh, you'll notice the storage here. You also see the on-demand water heater. Now, a lot of times, again, in these floor plans, they struggle to fit all this in, but because the eight foot wide box, they're able to have the shower to the side. You get the full sink. You still have plenty of room here for the toilet and you get this huge additional storage space. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a hanging rod up top. That's if I you know, have to give a fault here. That'd be one of them just because, you know, I want to use that as wardrobe. So you can, yes, you can put a tension rod up there, but I would have liked to have seen it straight from the manufacturer. Uh, you also see that you have the fan right up top, an additional light in here. And if I step up into the shower at six foot tall, again, because of that 81 inch ceiling height, 
I can fully stand up in here. I don't have to duck my head down. Shelves uh, along the side there, plus the hand wand. But again, that extra ceiling height that you get in this one, I think just really helps kind of set it apart from other lightweight RVs. You'll also notice right up in the corner is where your TV hookup is going to be. So if you want TV, uh, you know, you kind of have a good viewing angle as long as it's on a swing arm, whether you're in the dinette or here in the bed. And as you will notice, this one is going to be a Murphy style bed. Uh, you have electrical outlets on both sides, USB ports on one side to make up the bed. You simply drop this like so. You will release both of these locks, drop it down, and then you will fold the bed down and out. You also do have a couple of reading lights up here if you uh, want some reading lights as well. A couple last things before we head outside. You will notice that you have a large wardrobe on this side. So not only do you have it in the bathroom, but here as well for some additional clothes. And then I do quickly want to hit on the flooring. Uh, just because not only is this completely carpet free, so it's great for if you have uh, some pets with you, but it's also underneath that is going to be your 5 8 inch residential tongue and groove flooring. Uh, and then they're going to use two by three floor joists going across. So again, just extra reinforced, just kind of reinforcing what I mentioned earlier about excellent construction in this coach. All right, before we get into exterior features, let's quickly talk about construction. Starting on the ground, working our way up. This one sits on 225, 75 R15 tires. Those are going to be E load range tires. Uh, if we take a look at the axles, you will see that they underslung the axles so that the RV itself sits a little bit lower, which with a smaller RV like this is generally preferred as it's going to have better towability, less wind resistance. Just bear in mind that it won't have as much ground clearance. Coming up a little bit further than that, we get the fully enclosed and heated underbelly. Now, when I say heated, this one is going to be radiant heat, not forced air on the single axle. So what that means is the heat from essentially your uh, heat lines will be kind of radiating into that underbelly. So again, not something you're gonna wanna take out in super cold climates, but will probably serve this purpose in a little bit later in fall. As far as the sidewall, this will be a pretty standard construction here. You'll have two by two sidewall R7 bat insulation uh, kind of around the entire camper. But then up on the roof is something that's a little bit different. You're going to have the Tough Flex PVC roof membrane, which is going to be puncture and tear resistant. It's going to be sun and chemical resistant. Uh, and it's also going to have very little maintenance, especially when you compare it to an EPDM roof, which is why a lot of people do prefer it. All right, let's talk some weights. You will see here dry weight on this one as equipped is 3,806 pounds. And coming up to our GVWR, we're at 4,880. So you're looking at a little over a thousand pounds of carrying capacity. And again, you're still under that 5,000 GVWR. So you can basically load this thing up and still be good in a lot of those like uh, mid-size SUVs or a larger. And then if we take a look at the front, you can see right here, it's gonna be a single 20 pound propane bottle. Again, pretty standard for this size RV. You have rails for the battery. Also battery disconnect right up front makes it nice and easy to kill that small drain on the battery. So if you're not using it, you can cut that. I do like that. I also enjoy the fact that up front, you have the smooth aluminum front rather than the rib like we have on the side, just because that makes it a lot easier to clean. And honestly, in my opinion, I think it just looks a heck of a lot nicer. As for storage, you will notice that this one has a magnetic catch, which I do prefer that over just having a regular old latch. And although it is uh, kind of eaten up a little bit, which you would generally get with a Murphy bed, you actually do have pretty good pass-through storage with the Murphy bed system in here. Uh, and everything is completely finished off, which I like too, especially because some of that is taken up. So, you know, if you're putting things in and, and taking them out, they're not gonna get uh, stuck on like studs and things like that or any kind of plumbing in there. Should be pretty easy in order to maneuver. Uh, four stabilizer jacks on this one. You have the double fold out steps with the larger grab handle to get in and out of the RV. You also see the power awning with an LED light strip on there. Uh, now the door you will notice doesn't have a window on it, which does make things a little bit darker up front, but you have a really big window right here, which helps make up for it a little bit. Uh, again, a lot of manufacturers will, will remove the window from the door just to help kind of lower that cost, which is uh, what they have done here. You will also see that you have outside TV hookup if you want TV, that's gonna be nice and convenient. And as we talked about earlier, this one does have the tankless on-demand water heater, which I have tested and folks, I'm telling you that thing is awesome. 
Uh, you will also see that you have a, a little place here to tie up your four-legged friend, and then right above that is a bottle opener. Both of those are going to be super useful for, obviously, very different reasons. In the back's a square tubular bumper, so you get a little bit of extra storage if you have something that's long. I know that, you know, it, uh, in the past, you used to be able to put a sewer hose in there, but with the sewer hoses nowadays, most of them are actually too big, so you uh, probably do want to find a different place to store that, but you can, again, uh, store a bunch of other stuff in there, and mounted to that will be the spare tire. You can see your city water inlet, black tank flush, as well as an outside shower will be located back here as well. We take a look up top, we have a couple different preps. You will see both your backup camera prep and over to this side will be the ladder prep so you can buy that Lippert uh, extendable ladder and just pop it right up there. Uh, last couple things I want to touch on, this one does have a 30 amp detachable power cord and then your termination will be located right back here. Now, if you kind of like this layout, you like the Murphy bed up front, but you want something with a little more space, a little bigger counter, maybe a slide out, then check out this Silver Lake 1800 RB I have coming up next.